Greetings and welcome to Ethics Online. Um, this is going to be your typical welcome video. I'm going to tell you everything that you have to expect to do in this course, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, and what you need to do to succeed. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. This is also the video that you will have what's called a syllabus quiz on. It's basically a quiz just to say, hey, I watch the video, I know what's going to happen in the class, and this also proves I was in, an, in attendance, right? Because in an online class, your attendance is actually still measured. Um, even though you're not physically here, you're still um, measured by, in attendance by completing at least one assignment per week, all right? And this isn't my law, this is a state law, okay, that says if you don't complete at least one assignment per week, it's considered uh, to be in breach of your absences, and then you'd have to be withdrawn from the course. And if you're withdrawn, that still means you owe money for it, right? So there's no sense in, you know, wasting away money. That being said, let's get into this class. All right, so here's what we're going to do in ethics. And if for some reason you signed up for this and don't know what ethics actually are, ethics is a branch of philosophy, right? Philosophy is, to keep it at its most simple, is the study of ideas that inform us about the nature of reality. That's what philosophy does, is we tear the mask off reality and understand it in the same way that a biological doctor would understand the body is what philosophers do to reality. Put it that way, right? But ethics, on the other hand, is just a branch of philosophy. So uh, you're kind of getting the filet rather than the whole steak here when you take ethics. In ethics, what we're going to do is we're going to pick about, looks like anywhere between 10 to 12 different ethical theories about any everything from the golden mean to how to create a social contract to the will to power to master-slave morality to how to gain and keep power, according to Machiavelli. We're going to study the gamut of um, of the most influential, I would say, most influential philosophers and the uh, ethics that they have provided to humanity. Um, now, what's going to make this class different and what's going to make it a little bit more modern and, you know, hopefully less boring is when we study, I don't know, a, a certain ethical theory, when we study that ethical theory, in order to give you a full understanding of everything for the most part, when you can understand a certain ethic, it gives you an insight to reality that you didn't have. The best metaphor I can say is imagine ethics is like getting your vision tested, right? They say, you know, look through one lens. Can you see right? No. Next lens. Is that better? A little bit. Next one. You know, so on, so on, and so on. Until you have perfect vision. And believe it or not, that's what ethics is for the most part. Is to, is you have to be able to understand all the ethics of reality by viewing it through all of its lenses. For you to sit there and for anyone to sit there and say they know what's right and wrong based on just one book is equivalent to me saying, here's what ethics is from just one philosopher. That would be quite insufficient, right? So that's how we have to view these ethical theories. Plus, we're also gonna learn that the cool thing about ethics is it's also a competition of ideas in the same sense that human societies compete against each other to improve and thrive and strive. Well, so too do these ethical theories. 
Because remember, or if I haven't told you, ethics is created by your morality, but your morality is created by your culture. That's why there's so many different moralities, because there's so many different types of cultures. So at the end of the day, it is all about us. And if it's all about us, we need to study a various, you know, a various slate of philosophers and their ethical theories. So that's what we're going to do. But like I said, what makes this class unique is that for you to prove that you can understand these ethics and not just memorize a bunch of information and spit it back out onto a piece of paper, but to prove true understanding, the only way to do that is through application. You got to be able to apply these ethics or at the very least, identify when a certain ethical theory is occurring. Now, here's the problem. A lot of us, I am going to imagine, have never been in a position to be able to even understand some of these ethical theories because you've never had the experience in your life that made you say, hey, do I make a Machiavellian decision here? Or do I make a decision based on the just war theory, right? Unless you have, unless you're somehow a general or a former officer in the military, it's a safe bet that you're not in the military, which means how do you make decisions based on a just war theory? So in other words, I can't ask you a test question that says, tell me, how the just war theory applies to your everyday life. It's like, well, <laughs> the answer would be it doesn't <laughs> because I've never been to war, right? That's what you would say. Or, you know, if you're former military like I am, you would write, well, while I've been to war, I never had to make a decision that uh, made the war just or not. You know, I was just told what to do, in which case it still doesn't apply to you. So the only way for us to apply these ethical theories when you haven't lived them is to, essentially I have to say, you have to view things from what's called a God's eye perspective. And, the, and a God's eye perspective is almost like, you know, if you've heard of the game, The Sims, right? It's, or when you watch a movie, right? When you watch a movie, and let's say that movie, what was happening in the movie was absolutely real. It wasn't fiction. Let's make that assumption, right? What you would be doing is almost like watching a documentary. You're watching reality unfold. And by watching a reality unfold, you can say, oh, well, I know here's what the just war theory requires. And while I've never lived through war, I certainly can watch it. I can certainly observe it through this God's eye perspective. And when that happens, then you've applied the ethic and that's what you're going to kind of be tested on, right? And to make it fun, like I said earlier, um, for each group of philosophers that you'll be tested on, I'm going to give you a list of general Hollywood movies um, that I put a lot of, had to put a lot of thought into because one, it had to be, you know, intellectually deep enough to warrant a philosophical discussion, to be popular enough where everyone can have a means to watch it, and uh, um, what else did I pick? But generally, those are the big thing. It had to be popular enough where you anyone can watch it if you live in the 21st century, right? Especially if you're taking an online class. and But still be popular enough um, that you don't have to go to some indie flick and get the ethical code. So let me explain this in context. Say we're up, let, yeah, let's do our first exam. 
This week, you're going to be given notes on the philosopher Plato and what he considered was the ethical state of being and the ethical soul. Um, to him, they were one and the same. We're going to study that philosopher, right? Then you're going to be given a quiz on either one or two philosophers and their ethics, right? So you're going to have that quiz. After you have the quiz, which will be, we're going to have about five of those, and I think, so each one's 20 points, equating to 100. But then you're going to have three exams. Now, for the exams, what you would do, like, for example, the first one, is I would say, here is a list of movies where Plato's ethics have happened, or the second philosopher is Aristotle, or where Aristotle's ethics have happened. Now, pick a movie, and it'd be like, write almost like a one-page essay, or one-page, yeah, ethical essay, saying, uh, for example, here's how uh, the yin-yang symbol was used in Star Wars, you know, light and dark, you know, it's not good and evil, but it's active and passive forces. And you can see, that's just an example, but that's what we'll be doing, right? And so that way you've got that God's eye perspective and you apply the ethical theory, proving you have understanding of the theory. If you want just a more, more basic metaphor, it's like in a biology class. On a Monday, you would go to the actual class and learn the theory. Wednesday, you have a lab, right? And what do you do in the lab? You apply the theory. And that's what we do in ethics. We learn the ethical theory, but you're going to be examined on its application, not just saying, what is the definition of utilitarianism? Like, yes, I admit that is very much easier than what I will be asking, but it's, you also are putting in a dollar and getting 10 cent back if that's what you're wanting. I'm hoping to give you, to use that metaphor, you put in a dollar and you'll get at least 10 out because if you can apply these ethics, folks, this is what lawyers do every day and get paid. Now, I mean, when you have to do it, when you have to defend the OJs, you have to somehow uh, put the right lenses on to get people to see, you know, your argument, your idea. You have to learn how to frame an idea. And that's what these philosophers are going to do with these ethics is saying, this is what's right, here's what's wrong. Or some are gonna say right and wrong are too childlike, they're too simple, you know. Um, universal law is for lackeys, context is for kings. That's one of the famous quotes by uh, Captain Lorca, and he's right. Context matters. It's everything. And that's what we'll get out of the class. So the last thing I think I needed to touch on was, so uh, we went over the attendance, explained how we're going to study, what we're going to study, kind of the uniqueness of it. Um, what you're going to need for the class, you know, um, you will be able to pass every quiz and exam based on these videos and the lecture notes and stuff I'll post on D2L. And the textbook will certainly help supplement and it can explain these different ethical theories maybe in another way that will help you understand it if you're not understanding what I have to say. I think, yes. So, <laughs> um, and the only other thing you'll actually need for the book, besides, like I said, just you're going to need access to watch those movies, and you'll see them posted on D2L when the time comes. Um, but besides that, you are required to come to campus at least once, to take your, um, it's gonna be your final exam. 
uh, you will be required to come to the main campus to do that. Uh, so if you can't, um, you, you probably need to take the face-to-face -face version of the class or a different one because the final exam matters a lot. So yeah, you got five quizzes, you'll have three exams where you, you know, apply an ethic to a movie and then, so that's 300 points. And then your final exam is 100 by itself, equating to 500 points for the class. And that way you can always keep track of your grade as we continue. Otherwise, I think that's all I need to say. Um, make sure you take the little um, quiz on this video by, when do you have to take it? I think I'll give you till Sunday night to finish it. It's just gonna be like two or three questions and ain't gonna take a lot of time. Um, and then all the notes that you'll need for wave one assignments will be posted within the next 48 hours, all right? Till then, look forward to getting to, uh, I guess I'm not with you, so telling you things <laughs> later.